Tomac Airport, Tomac, Washington. Automated weather observation, 1545 five, Zulu. Wind 260 zero at zero 04. Visibility 3 quarters. Temperature 01 Celsius. Dew point minus zero 01 Celsius. You guys all set? Yep, I'm good. Two buckles. Coming up. There we go. A lot of the flying we're doing is not. It's not anything most people would even would even conceive of happening. There she is. Right here. There. Point. Right here. I I I don't see okay. her. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Right there. Okay, got her. We're flying. 10 feet off the ground at 30 miles an hour around trees just to get a chance at maybe darting a single animal. Maybe. Right there. Ah, dart him. Dart him. Perfect. Nice job, guys. Nice job. We virtually had no wolves left in Washington State after 1930. And in the 90s and early 2000s, wolves started to show up in reports occasionally. But in 2008, we were able to confirm our first pack. And then from there, it's been building. So they're coming from British Columbia, they're coming from Idaho, Montana. And part of my job in monitoring the population is seeing where they're recolonizing what parts of Washington they're showing up and trying to find them as they get here. Let's see. We're monitoring wolves a lot of different ways in all these different aspects to answer the same question. How many wolves are there and how's recovery progressing? It might seem simple, but there's a lot going on in that. <laughs> Today, we went out on snowmobiles in the Loop Loop Pack territory. We are doing our winter surveys where we try to get a minimum count of the number of wolves in each pack. And so we were looking for tracks and sign of wolves, because that's one of our methods for counting them. So we got two at least going this way. And if you've got a lot of sign and activity, we'll throw up a trail camera there and see when they come back through. And so we do that first. And if we think wolves are in the area and we think it's a pack of wolves and they may have pups, we'll then try to go in and we'll try to collar one of those adult wolves. And the way we do that is by trapping them in the summer. So we'll go in, we'll set these leg hold traps just like you could probably imagine, except for they have rubber instead of steel where the teeth are. And you go out and you check traps and you don't catch anything. And you go out and you check more traps and you don't catch anything. They can be incredibly frustrating because wolves are incredibly smart. And the winter is, it's a whole different thing. In the winter time with a pack, with a collar, we can go in and, and put another collar in or switch those collars out with a helicopter. We'll draw the blood. I will put ear tags in, put a microchip in it, just like you would microchip a dog. And then we'll collect a tissue sample for DNA and uh, we'll take all kinds of measurements and we'll fasten that collar on. By having a collar in the pack in the winter time, we're able to go out and use a fixed wing plane and we can circle with the plane, locate where that pack is, and we can actually physically count the number of wolves. One, two, there's at least two straight down. A large part of our wolf monitoring has been collar based. So as wolf biologists, we go out and we put radio collars on wolves, and then that information allows us to figure out how many wolves are in packs and kind of what a territory looks like. But as the wolf population grows, we're not able to maintain collars in every pack. I'm sure this is a GPS collar, right? Yeah. Every time we put a collar on, you're stressing that animal. You're running a risk of injuring or killing that animal. 
you're running a risk of injuring or killing yourself if you're flying in a helicopter. More and more, the more I do it, the more I realize how dangerous it is. And, I, and kind of what we're risking to do this. And then when you really think about what we're getting kind of in return, what kind of data we're getting, that's kind of when we start thinking about, are there other ways to get this data? Do we need to risk as much to do this? Collars are a tool, but we're looking at cheaper ways and better ways to constantly refine how we're finding wolves on the landscape. Audiomaz are a open source, computer chip based listening device. And setting the Audiomoth is simply just putting this little device in a Ziploc bag and stapling it to a tree. We're just listening to the sounds that are out there and we're using that to tell us how many wolves are in a landscape. That's never been done before, and it's super exciting. You're listening to wolves howl. I think we gather a lot of this information because people want to know. For the folks that love to see wolves on the landscape, they want to know for the folks that have livestock and may not love wolves and may not want to have them on the landscape. They still want to know. These animals are very normal in a lot of ways. So when I say normal, I'm not meaning like they're boring or anything like that, but that, you know, they have no idea that they're controversial and they're just doing regular wolf stuff every day. I like to say they're just another critter on the landscape and they're not near the, the big bad wolf that everybody makes them out. But they're not a saint either, you know. They're right in the middle. <laughs> and I just wish folks would understand that a little bit more. So 